verse 9. We all know that. Romans 10 and 9. And the NIV version says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. We ask that you consecrate us and prepare us for it. Bless us in our engagement with it. Challenge us, oh God, to live it out and be with us as we go out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Reaching out to heal, but he won't let it in. He defies it. He defies it. He's not ready. He's not on his knees yet. He's too strong to be weak. Real bad. You're welcome. Shh. Made me think about dropping the mic. So we've been in this series on the Great Commission. We've been talking about for the last several weeks, disciple making, going ye therefore to make 
disciples. We've looked at all these various passages of Scripture. We talked about last week um, what it means to be a disciple. The week before that, we talked about what it means to have a commission. And, and this week, this week, we're looking at the topic of we're on a mission and we're looking at evangelism. Now, now what comes to your mind? What, what, what's in your heart when you hear the word evangelism? Many of us are stricken with fear and, and frustration and de- just thinking about maybe some bad experiences we've had with overzealous people and evangelism. And you just can't even imagine standing out on the corner. I remember as a little boy, uh, we walked to school. And it's about a mile walk. And, and we went to 99th Street Elementary School. And on the corner of 98th, one block, it was always this lady um, who was filled with both spirits. Amen. Um, who would pray and would touch our hearts. And we were little kids, fourth, fifth grade. We didn't know what to do. And every time she was out there, she wasn't out there every day, but often. And she would pray for us. And, and we just had no way of avoiding her if we wanted to go straight home. So sometimes we would go all the way around to 101st Street to come around the other side to avoid the overzealous uh, woman who was filled with both spirits. Amen. Some spiritual spirit and then the spirit from the corner liquor store. Amen. Amen. That's why I say both both spirits. Amen. And so and so it, it, it's, it's really a challenge and, and, and many of us can't even imagine ourselves going out there. And, and, and I want to try to challenge us a little bit today and then give us some comfort as well. Amen. So, so one is that I need you all to understand that, a, a, that an evangelist or what evangelism is, is the action of telling people the gospel story, the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the process of being used as a vessel to lead people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and it's interesting because when we got the Great Commission, um, you, we must understand that the Great Commission is not an option to be considered and pondered. Uh, but according to uh, J. Hudson Taylor, it is a command to be obeyed. In other words, the Great Commission of going and making disciples and sharing the gospel and being an evangelist is not an option for those. It is a picture of the commander in chief standing for, before his troops. And he says to them, go ye there. For anyone ever uh, served in the military? If you served in the military, when your commanding officer gave you an order, it was not to be negotiated, discussed. It was to be obeyed. And any disobedience, and I'm not trying to scare you and say, oh, you're going to hell because you didn't evangelize. No, not at all. If those who have called upon the name of the Lord, come on somebody, and believe in their heart, confess with their mouth, they shall be what? Saved. So we're, we're good with that. But I want to challenge you. I want to help you to understand that as fearful as it is, and by the way, uh, I did a series last summer, uh, a two-part series um, last summer on sex and sexuality and, and all that other stuff, and I got a lot of calls and people text messages. But let me tell you, I got more calls on this evangelism thing than I did on sex. <coughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and, it's, and, and, and I, had, I, had a, I had one woman call me, and she just, and I, and I know you might be able to relate to her. She called me, and she's like, you know, she sent me an email. And I guess I didn't respond to the email quick enough because I didn't see it yet. And she called me, and she said, did you get my email? And I'm like, no, nah, let me look. And I said, like, you just sent it three minutes ago. Well, you didn't call back. I'm like, okay. She said, you know, Pastor, you, 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 you need to, I know your intentions are good. I know you're trying to do what the, what the Great Commission says. But, you know, we can't be teaching about evangelism in, in Bible study because some folks just ain't ready. They're too new in the faith. And, 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 and you got to understand, Pastor, that, that you can't just send anybody out there trying to share God's word. Anybody, anybody felt that? You don't know enough to go out to anybody? Y'all don't know enough, you know. And, Pastor, it ain't fair because you got all these degrees. You got degrees from schools we didn't even know existed. And, and, and you're going to tell people to go out there and make disciples? We, we got to study more. We got to prepare. You just can't send them out there. Come on, somebody. And others say, then you got people who are new Christians. They just knew. They know they're just too young to go out there. 
Well, well I want to try to really challenge you on that. I'm, I'm going to try to challenge you on that um, because it is, it, it is important. Uh, um, first, first thing I want to share with you, if we, if we look at the text, let's go back and look at the text. It's interesting. It's interesting. Because first and foremost, whether you want to do it or not, it's still a command. Amen. You know, it, it's interesting because I, can, can I just, I'm not even going to preach. I just want to, can I just ask y'all a question? I, this ain't got nothing to do with the message. I'm just, just asking y'all. You know, what's wrong with our kids? No, no, no. That's the wrong question. What's wrong with my kids? I mean, you know, I'm like, they, we got a dishwasher. And when I ask them to wash dishes, all I'm doing is asking them to rinse the things off and stick them in a the dishwasher and push a button. And they fight me as if it's an option. As if they have a, you know, the, as if, they, if they're going to win the discussion. And it's every week. They've been doing it for years, but every week. They alternate. One has it this week. One has it the next week. And then they say, well, why doesn't Donovan wash dishes? Because we won't have no dishes to wash if he washes dishes. Amen? And, 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 it's just, and I'm just like, at some point, I'm like, listen. You can fuss and fight all you want, but you got to wash the dishes. And then one, one of my daughters asked me just the other day, you know, Daddy, do we have to wash dishes when, when we have company? Because there's a lot of dishes. Can't, can't they wash their dish? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. So what, what's the point? The point is, is that we always, when things seem hard and overwhelming and something we don't want to do, we want to look for a way to get out of it. And I want to try to make it less daunting for you as we. So first it says here in John, I mean, um, I keep saying John, in Romans 9, 10 and 9, Romans 10 and 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It says, if you confess what you believe, you shall be saved. But then he goes on to ask this, this series of questions in verse 14. It says, but how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? Right? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And then verse 15, and how can they preach unless they are sent? Watch this. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Look at this progression. It says the ultimate goal, because you know, Romans, in, in, in Romans 5, 6, and 7, he, de he deals with sin pretty intensely. And then he kind of crescendos here and says, you know, all this sin stuff, he says, but if we confess what we believe, we shall be saved. Right? And then he says, but, but, but how can people be saved and how can they call, how can they confess on something that they don't believe in? And how can they believe in something if they ain't heard it? And how can they heard it if no one preaches it? And how uh, will someone preach it unless someone is sent? Going backwards. How can they confess if they didn't hear? Because faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. He says, and who will they hear if ain't nobody preaching? And who going to preach if they ain't sent? Give it to you again. Y'all didn't get it. I'm coming over here. What I was saying to those folks over there who weren't paying attention. He says, faith cometh by hearing. And if you confess, you shall be saved, but you believe in your heart. But how can they confess something they never heard? How can they believe in something they never heard? And how are they going to hear it if somebody ain't speaking it? And then how will someone speak it if they haven't been released to speak it. So here it is. Every Christian, every Christian has been called to preach. Just ain't every Christian been called to preach up here. And the word preach, write it down. The word preach, write it down. The word preach means to be a herald or a crier, right? A carrier of the message of someone who sent them. A preacher is one who takes the message of someone. It's not his message. It's not her message. But they take the message of someone in authority and deliver it to someone who needs to hear it. 
And a preacher is simply a carrier or a herald or a proclaimer or a crier of the message that they receive from someone in authority. And what I need you to understand is that oftentimes for preaching, you don't have to use words. We preach by the life we live. We preach by the attitudes of our heart. We preach by the actions of our, uh, our lives. The words that we speak only validate what we believe in our heart. The word belief in the Jewish culture was always connected to what you did, not what you said. You believe what you do because you only do what you believe. Go back to my children. They do a terrible job of washing dishes. They put stuff in a dishwasher turned the wrong way. Water never gets in it. Sometimes dishes come out dirtier after the, come on somebody, because they don't believe, they, do, they don't believe they have to or should have to wash dishes. So I want you to know that everybody here has been sent. Go ye therefore and make disciples. You've been sent. And you've been sent to proclaim the word with your actions, your life. Are you all with me? Because faith cometh by hearing. Come on, you still didn't get it. Here's the thing. When you have had an internal conversion, there must be an external expression. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. I already know because I can smell it. I mean, I can see it. I can smell what you're thinking. What you're thinking is, well, Reverend, um, my faith is private. I, I, I study at my house. My faith is private. No, 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 no. Your faith ain't private. It's personal. I'm coming back over here because y'all ain't hitting it over here. I just, can y'all help me out? We don't have a private faith. We have a personal faith. Our faith was never meant to be private. We must live out loud because it's like fire shut up in our bones. We can't keep it to ourselves. He sends us to go, so it can't be private. You can't be a Christian in secret. It lives out in who you are. Now, it's, it's, it's personal because God deals with our own personal sin, our own personal condition. And I want you to understand that we must share it because people need to hear it because faith cometh by that's the fourth first, first time I said that, fourth time I said that. Let me give you an example. There was a woman, let me give you an example. My, my, my homegirl um, from, um, from Mark chapter 5, my homegirl had an issue with blood. She had an issue with blood for 12 long years. And it says, the Bible says, that when she saw Jesus, no. The Bible says when she went to church, no. The Bible says in Sunday school, no. The Bible says when she heard about Jesus. Mm. She says that she was going about her way. She had an issue with blood. She was ostracized. She was broke, busted, and disgusted. And, 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 and she heard about Jesus. And she turned and went to a place that she never would go if she didn't hear the word of God. And she went to him, and she went to him, and she, and she got to him, and she said that I know I ain't supposed to be here. I know that I'm dirty. I know I'm breaking all the social norms. I know I'm not in the inner crowd. I know that everybody knows my business because I'm not telling my story. Someone else is telling my story. So my stuff is all in the street. She said, but because of what I heard, she said, it moved me closer to Jesus. Because of what I heard, I had to break through the crowd because of what I heard. She said, not if I can hug him, not if I can high five him, but if I can just get over the crowd, if I can just reach over the people, if I can just get to the hem of his garment. I don't care if he looks at me. I don't care if he talks to me. I just got to get close enough to him. Because of what I heard moved me closer to Jesus. If we don't preach God's word with our life, who's going to hurt him? And who's going to be moved by him? And wherever we are, we are to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And it's interesting, it's interesting, it's interesting, because she, she hurt, oh man, she blessed you. Bless you, my homie, from Mark chapter 5. She, 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 she didn't try to get to the head. She got to the hymn. Now, I need to talk to my friend from Mississippi for a moment. 
I don't know. I, I, how long? How long you been here? I mean, how, how long you been? Long time. It's just a, we gonna leave it a long time. Now I don't know, but my mama from Somerville, Tennessee. Somerville. It's between uh, Nashville and Memphis. You, if you leave Memphis and start heading to Nashville, just at some point, just turn off the highway and you get to get to her little city. Amen. And, 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 and she moved to California, and because she wanted to get away from all that. And, but 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 she still didn't have all the modern amenities. I remember as a little boy, we didn't have a um a um a washing machine and a dryer. And then when we did get a washing machine, we didn't get a dryer for a long time. Now, how do you dry clothes when you hang them on a clothesline? And 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 and, and, and what I need you to see, y'all know what clothespin? What is it, young folk? Cole, you 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 know what a clothesline is? You seen the clothesline? You seen a clothespin? A clothespin. What is made out of? You saw one in Kentucky? Not at your house, though, huh? Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, so, so the clothespins made out of wood with that, with the metal, and you clip them on, and then you have them all across, right? And it would be so embarrassing, right? Because you know your mama got all her stuff out there, and you like you don't want your friends to come over, like, oh, look at your mama stuff, man. You were talking about my mama. Anyway, anyway, what I, what I want you to understand is that when when the clothes begin to dry, they dry from the top to the bottom, and you could almost see that the top of something would be dry, but the saturation of the wetness would be at the bottom. As a matter of fact, the bottom was more wet after it had been hanging than it was when you first hung it up. You didn't get it. And so when it's indicative of when she went to the hem of his garment, the saturation of the anointment was not up high. The saturation of God's power was those who would be lowly enough to come down and get to where God would have us to be. And I need you to know when we share God's word, we're not telling folks to be big and bad. You come just as you are without one plea, but that thy blood was shed from me. Come in your lowly state. Come in your brokenness life. Come crawling. Come to Jesus just as you are, and God will, from hearing his word, change your life. Now, that's the power of the word. How? Can they come if they don't hear? But now here's the question, and I need to answer this stuff. I'm closing my Bible. I'm almost finished. Yeah, see, I'm closing my Bible, getting my stuff. I'm almost finished. I'm about to get out of here. I'm almost finished. And I'm not leaving because I'm going to say hello to y'all because I had to leave last week. This week I'm going to say hello. Now, see, look, so, 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 so the question becomes, well, I still, that sounds good, Reverend. Him, blood, broke. Clothesline, saturation, anointing, all that sounds good, but I still don't know what to say. I still, I still have some fear. So let me tell you something. We have to grow in our faith. Watch this. You write this down. That in order for us to fully mature, we must be engaged and involved in at least five areas, not at least these five areas of ministry. The first, we must have um, a conversion experience evangelism. Secondly, we must have a worship experience, celebration. Right? Conversion, celebration. We must make a commitment to studying God's word. That's discipleship. So there needs to be a conversion. There needs to be celebration. There needs to be a commitment. Watch this. There needs to be a part of the community which we call fellowship, community. And then lastly, there needs to be a contribution. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about contribution of your time, of your talents, of your gift. You serve. You have to serve. Those five things together equal maturity. And what happens is many of us worship, but we don't do the other four, and we're not maturing. You, you won't mature and just worship. you got to worship and study. Be committed and study. And, and not only study, but fellowship with one another. We're not studying in isolation. We, we fellowship. You mature because what you study about patience and then you get around folks that make you uh, want to challenge and slap them upside the head, but you are never growing patience unless you're around folks that make you want to slap them. Don't look at your wife. Just look at her head and say amen. Wives, don't look at your husband because I know. So does that make sense? But the other thing is there's this piece called evangelism. We'll never fully mature in God unless we evangelize. 
So now, here it is. I'm closing on this. So how do we evangelize? I want you all to do one thing. Don't trip. You ain't got to have fancy words. You don't have to have pious constructs. You simply have to do what he did in John chapter 9. In John chapter 9, there was a brother who was born blind. He was born blind. And the Pharisees wanted to know, was it his sin? Was it this? Was it that? And he said, no, it wasn't that. He was just born blind. And, and, and when he was, and then he got up one day, and he went out, and he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus uh, took the mud and spat and put it on his eyes, and then he could see. And, and the Pharisees were all upset because he, they performed this miracle on the Sabbath day. And, and they wanted to know, they said, man, what, what happened to you? What, what happened to you? He says, man, I don't know what happened to me. I don't know all that Jesus did. He says, all I know is this morning I got up, I was blind. I had an encounter with Jesus, and he touched me, and now I can see. And that's your testimony. Your testimony ain't what verse, what chapter, Old Testament, New Testament, the Pentateuch, the Torah, the Deuteronomy. No, none of that stuff. All you have to say is that Jesus touched me, and now I've been made whole. I don't know how he did it. I don't even know why he did it. But if you want to know where I learned about it, come and learn with me. Come on, somebody. And then they went to his parents. And his parents, if I can use my South Central Ebonicized version of the Bible, they went up to him and they said, is this your boy? He said, yeah, that's my boy. That's, that's my boy, Leon. Uh, uh, Leon, yeah, that's my boy, Leon. He says, he says that, 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 that was Leon born blind. Leon was, Lee, 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 Lee was born blind. Come on, somebody. Lee, Lee was born blind. And, 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 and what happened to him? He said, I don't know. But Lily got up this morning and was blind. He said he met a man named Jesus who touched him. And now my Lily can see. I don't know what you're upset about, but he must be a prophet of God. Because all I know is he once was blind, but now he sees. You tell the people at your job, I am a changed person because Jesus touched me. The only difference between me this morning and me this evening is that I was touched by the hand of God. You ain't got to explain nothing. Tell them to come on with you and learn about how with me. That's it. You tell your neighbor, I was touched by Jesus. That's all I know, and that's all I can say. Can you do that? Can you, can you do that? Because one woman said, uh, 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 come see a man <laughs> who told me all about me. Another person, another man said, uh, come hear a man who speaks like no man ever spoke before. Come on, somebody. Who, who, what manner of, one of, another person said, what manner of man is this? <laughs> you, you ain't got to know all this. Just say what you know and share Jesus wherever you go. And if you have to use words, use it. I want to challenge you all as I close. I want to challenge you not to even share unless you just feel Just think about one person whom God has put in your circle of influence and write that person's name down and pray for that person until God gives you an opportunity And make it your personal commitment that you're going to share with one person that you're praying for. Maybe you put two. And whichever one comes up first, that you would share what God tells you to share. Is that fair? Is that hard? Because we'll never grow in Christ. And believe it or not, you might think that I'm trying to be funny, but believe it or not, I'm afraid. I often struggle with these evangelism stuff. Half the time, I go more than half the time. I don't even tell people what I do. What you do for a living? I'm a counselor. What you do? I'm a teacher. What you do? I'm a motivational community worker. Because all the stigma that comes along and preachers of L.A. didn't help none. Come on, somebody. Just, I'm just trying to tell y'all something. Preachers of L.A. didn't help none. 
But yet and still, God has called me to do the work of an evangelist. And God will uniquely use you in a unique way. Evangelist. And Larry, I don't know if you're with me. This is, the sermon's over, but I just, I just thought about this. Larry, were you with me? About uh, one of you guys, and if it wasn't, just act like you were so it makes it look like I'm deep. Do you remember one year after revival we went to Cheesecake Factory? Was that you with me? Do you remember I had a conversation with the waitress who went to a local college? Do you remember that? Evangelizing. So I'm silly. Um, and, um, and I'll talk to anybody. And we were in the restaurant. It's late. We were in the restaurant. I think it was Cheesecake Factory. It was it Cheesecake Factory? And, and just talking to this, this, this uh, lady uh, who was serving us. And found out that she went to one of the local universities and was in her last semester and had been in her last semester for over a year and a half and couldn't get her last class. It was all kind of stuff. She just started sharing with us. Now, it's funny because it was like five preachers. And they were like, oh, my gosh. And this lady just poured her heart out. I'm going to tell you something interesting. I just found out about a week ago. Um, and I said, I said, I know someone who works at that school. I said, I wrote her name down, the lady who works there. I said, tell this woman that you're my friend. Now, what's your name? She told me, and I said, well, tell her you're my friend. And I said, and, uh, and go and talk. This is two or three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago, October. Three years ago. Watch this. I was cleaning out emails in spam. I had some spam from three years ago. I found an email from her. I never read. She says, thank you. And I never told her I was preaching, never told her anything. But I gave her my card, and she looked, and she goes, oh, church. Mm. But she followed up. She sent me this email saying, thank you. I reached out to your friend. She got me my class. I am graduating in a couple of weeks. Will you come? She said, you must have been God sent because I've been stressed ever since. I didn't even see the email until three years later. It was in my spam. Do the work of an evangelist. You have so many different... You were there. Am I telling the truth? She was there. She even apologized for taking so much of our time. But that's what... I didn't use one Bible verse. I wasn't preaching. I don't care what my kids say. I just simply shared love. And she didn't look like us. God, we thank you for your word. We ask that you bless us and keep us. Give us the courage to pray the prayer of faith. That you would use us as an evangelist. That you will use us in a creative way to touch, to encourage, to lead someone to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ their life may be touched and turned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you don't mind, will you stand to your feet?